Hi, and uh, thanks for watching again. Um, this week's video is going to be a two-part video. Um, it might end up being a three-part video, I'm not sure yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to create um, an overdrive pedal on a breadboard. Um, and we're going to take a schematic and then create that on a breadboard. So if you've never done that kind of stuff and you're interested in building your own overdrive pedal, this video is definitely for you. Uh, but if you are familiar with that stuff and know how to build your own pedals or how to work with a breadboard, um, you could probably just stop watching right now because this video is going to be a really introductory, very, very basic video. Uh, but also, if you are familiar with this stuff, um, my methods are not the best, probably. Um, so if you have any advice or if you can offer any um, points to improve on my methods, uh, please chime in in the comment section below. I love to learn new ways to make this process better. Um, but anyway, uh, we have a very simple schematic that I drew up. We'll be taking a look at that and then we'll be taking that schematic into an actual breadboard and creating an overdrive pedal on that breadboard. Um, so first, uh, the first part of the video right after this is going to be listening to the finished product that I've already built and going through some quick tones and then we'll look at the schematic and then um, I'll show a list of all the things you'll need to prepare to actually build this um, and then probably in part two which I hope to do next week uh, we'll actually start building this pedal on that breadboard I'll talk through how a breadboard works and what you need to do to actually go through the components and and build it so hopefully if you're interested in starting to get into some DIY with guitar pedals so um, I hope you enjoy the video uh, please share your thoughts in the comment section below and uh, let's just jump into the finished breadboard okay so we're taking a look at the breadboard that we'll be building today um, this is actually just a test sort of a prototype that I built um, before making the video we're actually going to take this apart right after this and then build a new one from scratch but um, before we do that, I just wanted to go through the tones um, just to get an idea of what it sounds like. Um, and so if you guys are familiar with breadboarding, um, you can just hear the tones and I'll show the schematic and then you can just kind of stop the video there. But uh, before we get started, let's start off with the clean tone. So this is going straight. Um, the plugs are connected to each other, so it's going straight to the amp right now on the neck pickup. Okay, and on the bridge pickup. Okay, and again, deck pickup. Okay, so that's a clean tone, and let me rewire this so we can listen to the drive tone. Okay, so we're back, and um, let's just start off with, this is the gain knob. Um, the output level is over here in the trim pot, and the tone trim pot is over there. But let's start off, uh, the output level and the tone have been set um, to kind of where I like it. But let's start off with the gain at noon on the neck pickup. Okay, and on the bridge pickup. Okay, so um, I think it sounds pretty good. Let's go through the gain knob real quick. Um, let me go back to the neck pickup and we'll start off at zero.
Okay, um, I guess I should probably go through the bridge pickup again, the same thing. Okay, so you get an idea of what it sounds like. Um, I think it sounds pretty good. I'm not going to do too many playing samples for today um, because this is going to be a relatively long video going through the breadboarding process. Um, but let's just do something, some noodling real quick. the bridge pickup and even increase the gain a bit more so it's get really like a nice hard overdrive tone Okay, so you get an idea. Um, again, I'm not going to go through all the tones, but um, it's, I think it's a pretty good sounding overdrive. Um, and I guess we should probably just jump into the schematic real quick. And then from there, go through um, the stuff that you'll need to build this. Okay, so let's um, jump into the next part. Um, I forgot to do one thing, and that is to quickly go through the uh, tone knob or the tone trim pot. Um, we went through the gain knob. I'm not going to go through the volume because that's pretty obvious and it's probably going to clip my soundboard but um, this is the tone trim pot and let's very quickly go through this. I'm going to on my bridge pickup. Okay, so um, it, I think it's got a pretty good um, range. It doesn't go too muddy or dark and it doesn't get too harsh or bright. So um, I think it has a good usable range. And um, yeah, that's it. So let's jump into the schematic. Okay, so this is the schematic of the uh, breadboard or the pedal that we'll be building today. Um, the, the goal or the aim behind um, the design for this was to keep the number of components like resistors or capacitors to a minimum without um, sacrificing the tone too much. And so I wanted to keep it very, very simple, but also not have it be so simple that um, after you build it, it doesn't sound all that great. So I wanted to build something that could be actually built as an overdrive pedal and actually be used as an overdrive pedal. So I think it, it does have a good tone to it. Um, but still, it's very, very simple um, so that it's not going to be something that's really difficult to build. Um, and so if you guys are familiar with circuits and have built your own pedals or breadboards, um, you can take one glass of this and um, you know what's going on. Um, but if you're not familiar with this stuff and you haven't built anything before, um, don't worry. It looks a little complicated, 
but it's not all that complicated and I'm not going to go through what each component does or what each part is I'm not going to explain what things do but we're just going to build this and I'm going to go through how to change this schematic into something on a breadboard and so that'll be the main focus for today's video okay so um, we're taking a look at the list of things that you'll need to have to build this um, and I guess the obvious and first thing is going to be the breadboard um, this is the breadboard that I used but um, it's a very small breadboard I don't know if these sizes are common in the states um, this is probably a Japanese size breadboard because everything is much smaller here in Japan but um, I like these because they are small enough to fit an entire uh, something simple like an overdrive and then I could just keep one of these without taking it apart and then just tuck it in my drawer um, to if I wanted to use it or again or play around with it um, so I have a bunch of these lying around uh, but anyway uh, um, you might want to find something bigger okay and the next thing is going to be uh, breadboard cables and these are just regular cables but they have a little metal lead on um, the end so that these can be plugged into the breadboard um, so it's definitely useful to have these instead of using regular cables or wires um, to have to sort of make the ends pointy and then plug those in so that's that and then regular wires um, these are just regular wires you can buy them in the bunch um, cut them and use them for your pots and your jacks so you won't actually need a whole lot of these you'll probably need uh, you know like um, two or three feet and you'll be fine but um, it, it is good to have these so you can connect your pots and your jacks and then the 9 volt battery snap um, looks like this it has the lead to connect a 9 volt battery and then this one actually has the breadboard leads on the other end the other end so that you can just plug this into a breadboard but you don't have to have these you can just use one a regular one with regular wires um, sticking out and then plug that into the breadboard but one of these and uh, the jacks like I mentioned earlier um, quarter inch jacks uh, anything again anything's fine um, as long as they're quarter inch um, they can be stereo they can be mono they can be big boxy types um, whatever you can find but quarter inch jacks two of these and then uh, resistors these little dinky things um, there's going to be a ton of resistors if you go shopping online for resistors uh, obviously by value and also by um, size and so what I have written here is um, it's called a quarter watt resistor within the quarter watt resistors you're going to see these brown ones um, sometimes they're not always brown but most of them are brown and that's going to be what's called a 5% tolerance and so um, if you say you're looking at a 10, 10 kilo ohm resistor um, a brown one is going to have plus or minus 5% tolerance meaning that it could be off from your 10 kilo ohm value by 5% um, and then there are going to be blue ones that are going to be plus or minus 1% tolerance uh, which is going to have a stricter tolerance and be closer to the actual value that it states um, with these it doesn't really matter again it's not an exact science so I'd say just buy whatever you can um, and also uh, the browner ones or the 5% uh, tolerance ones are going to be cheaper so but not I mean these are like you know five cents a piece or something like that so it's not a huge price difference but um, whatever you can get a hold of and then uh, the capacitors so those are these little guys and um, these are what's called a film capacitor um, you're going to have for these but the smallest one um, this is a 100 picofarad uh, capacitor and that's a very very small value and with something that small it might be hard to find a film capacitor um, and it might be easier to just get a ceramic capacitor a lot of people say that film capacitors uh, sound better but um, we're not going to go into the details of that for this but anyway um, with something small like a, a 100 picofarad capacitor 
uh, ceramic might be the way to go. But with the other three, um, you should have no problem finding film capacitors. And so um, this is a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor. Uh, you'll need two of these, 0 0.047 microfarads and then a 0 0.47 microfarad capacitor. Um, the next one is going to be what's called an electrolytic capacitor. It looks something like this. Um, I don't know if, how much the camera is going to pick this up, but and you're going to need two of these. Uh, they're they're going to be two 47 microfarad uh, capacitors, and then the trim pots. Trim pots are these little guys. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but they have three little leads um, sticking out, and you can plug these into the breadboard. And they're basically just like a regular pot, so you can turn the little screw, there's a little screw there, you can turn the screw and change the value of the resistor um, depending on where each of these three are connected. So that's a trim pot. Um, you're going to want a 20 kilo ohm trim pot and a 100 kilo ohm trim pot. Um, and then the regular pot is just a little volume pot like this. This is going to be your gain knob and it's going to be a 500 kilo ohm um, and I don't know if you can see this, but it says A on the back. And the A refers to how the resistance changes as you turn the knob. And so that's um, the A is an audio taper pot or sometimes called a log taper pot. Um, it just means how much the resistance is going to change as you sweep through the knob. Um, you can buy a different knob, which is going to be a 500K uh, B, and that's called a linear pot. And you'll get the exact same results as far as tones go because it's just a matter of resistance. But your knob is going to point in a different place. So um, with a 500K linear pot or a B pot, um, if you have the knob at noon, it's going to have a completely different distortion um, than with an audio taper pot. And so I would recommend uh, finding an audio taper pot if you can. But again, anything with a 500K will work. Um, and then the clipping diodes, okay. Uh, you probably can't see these, but um, again, anything works. Um, and this is probably where you can have the most fun. You can use LEDs, but any diode is going to work. Um, I have the two most popular diode types written down here, the 1N914 and the 1N4148. Uh, these are very easy to find. Um, and you'll need two of these so and you can mix and match these uh, without any problem you can have one uh, 914 and one LED or anything like that so again anything works as long as you have two and then the final piece will be the op amp um, and you've probably seen uh, an op amp maybe before because it is probably the most talked about component in an overdrive pedal um, today we're using just a very typical modern production JRC4558 but um, again um, not everything but most of what's called a dual op amp or a two channel op amp should work um, but again I've listed the more popular ones which will be the 4558, uh, the JRC5532 and the TL072 are probably the three most popular uh, op amps you'll find. And again, so um, anything works, uh, so have fun with that, and that should be it. And um, yeah, that's about it. So let's jump into the breadboard and start um, building the basics.